In the last episode we learned how to frame our image and make a beautiful video, static. In this one we're adding some movement and some energy. Adding camera movement is something that can really step up your videos, especially if you add one or two in the same shot. I'm super excited so let's just start right off with the first one and this is no movement. I'm sorry but this needs to be on the list so let's just get rid of it. A static shot is when you lock down your camera on a tripod. This can be used for interviews, establishing shots and when you need to take a break from the action, sometimes humorously. Now that's funny, but it's not why you clicked on this video, right? You want to see some camera movements, so let's get started with that. First on the real list is the pan. This is when you have your camera locked down on a tripod, but you move the camera from side to side. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the pan because I think it looks like news, but like every camera movement on this list, it has its place. We can also take the pan to the extreme and make a whip pan. This is when you pan the camera to the side super fast, either to make a transition into another scene or to add some action to, let's say, a POV shot. Oh. Oh. Is this what you really, really want? Yeah. See yourself. Now if we instead pan the camera up or down, this is called a tilt, and this can be used to reveal a person, but it can also be used to enter or exit a scene, like an establishing shot. Mr. Zuckerberg, this is an administrative board hearing. You're being accused of intentionally breaching security, violating copyrights, violating individual privacy. Then we have the push in, and this is the first movement where we actually physically move the camera itself. A great way to use the push in is to tell the audience that something is important by pushing in towards that detail. But it can also be used to show that a character is thinking about a hard decision or they're realizing something. What are you still doing here, old man? I'm gonna fuck you up. The opposite of the push-in is the pull-out, and this one can be used to reveal new information. It's also a great way to leave a scene or exit a scene, and it can also be used to physically leave a character alone, like the audience is distancing themselves from the character. Both of these movements can be used very fast to either create a comedic or action-like sequence. If you've ever seen a video from Edgar Wright, you might have seen this before and how he uses it in a great way. Then we have the roll, and this is basically when we roll the camera along one of the axes. Depending on how much you roll the camera, you can make your audience feel disoriented, or you can make them feel uneasy, or you can use it as just a cool camera movement, but it should not be used too often unless you want your audience to throw up. Next one on the list is tracking, and this is when we move the camera forward or backwards in the shooting direction. Unlike the push in or the pull out, we use this one when we want to follow someone for longer, let's say from A to B, without cutting. If we instead go sideways following someone, it's called a trucking shot. Very similar in both name and movement, but it differs from how you point the camera, basically. Look 
like a zombie, kid. You getting any sleep? I can offer you some benzedrine, dexedrine, caffeine, nicotine. Oh, you don't smoke, that's right. Better off. Now, if you just go for a short range, this is called a slider shot, and it's usually shot on a slider for those who want to carry around one of those. I use my gimbal for basically all my camera movements, and you can, of course, shoot this handheld, but then you get more of an action sort of documentary style to it. Now this next one is my absolute favorite. I use it pretty much all the time in all my videos and this have a lot of names but some of them are Orbit, Parallax or the Arc Shot. Basically what it does is that it's orbiting around your character or your subject. The effect that you get is that the background and the foreground are rotating while the thing in the middle are standing still. It can be used to reveal information, it can be used to show a new location, and it can, of course, like I said, just add some movement to an otherwise static scene. This can also be achieved when you're shooting with a drone, and if you're shooting on a gimbal, it might be a bit hard to do it at first, because you have to physically walk while trying to move the gimbal in a perfect curve without any jitters or jerks. But if you can learn it, you should, because it's just so useful. I love it. I've already said that but I love it. Then we have the boom shot or the jib shot, and this is a bit harder to do without expensive gear. This is usually achieved when using big cranes, but it can of course be used in smaller scales with a gimbal too. This is also great for revealing stuff or introduce a scene or just to get some dynamic movement in your scene. Personally, I'm a big fan of using my drone for this, like in this wedding example here. Here I'm going forward and declining and moving the camera up, so basically I got three camera movements in the same shot. And if you ask me, I think it looks really great. The next and final one is random movement or handheld and this is basically when you combine any camera movement and just make it randomly. You don't follow a specific direction but rather just move the camera to follow the subject wherever it's going. A handheld shot can also be sort of static by just taking up the camera from that tripod and holding it still because you will get a little bit of that handheld motion. And like I mentioned briefly before, shooting handheld is perfect for action scenes or a documentary style. Just know that you want big slow movements and not like micro jitters like this because that just looks super unprofessional and cheap and you don't want that. He's just the beginning. And, and as for uh, the television's so-called plan, Batman has no jurisdiction. He'll find him and make him squeal. So that is it for this episode and actually the shooting part of this series. And now that we know a few things, we're finally gonna practice for real. I would suggest making a video including at least three camera angles, four shot sizes, five camera movements and up to let's say three composition setups. You can make a video of anything. You can cook, you can buy a pizza, you can get the mail, you can clean your house, I don't know. But practice is everything and the more you do it, the more you can do this without even thinking about it in the end. And then maybe if you're happy with it, you can share it in the Facebook group so the rest of us can see it. Now I'll leave you to practice and I hope I get to see you in the editing part of the bootcamp series. Thank you for watching. Thank you.